chalo coming back so we were saying that uh, if you, if you look at this transverse section you can see how the muscles are arranged in this in this section uh if you, if you look at this this cartilage here is a thyroid cartilage here and here is a cricoid cartilage and resting on the cricoid cartilage is this arytenoid right that's an arytenoid cartilage and that's a that's a transverse view if you look at this uh, if, if i start my discussion actually with the muscle here or muscle below in this in this region here now you can see a muscle which is attached to the arytenoid cartilage that is arytenoid cartilage i'm just writing once only that is arytenoid cartilage to the posterior surface of cricoid cartilage to the posterior surface of cricoid cartilage Okay. This muscle is called as posterior cricoarytenoid. This muscle is posterior cricoarytenoid. That muscle is called as posterior cricoarytenoid. And the reason for calling it posterior cricoarytenoid is because it is attached to the posterior surface of the cricoid cartilage. So the name posterior cricoarytenoid here is because it is attached to the posterior surface of the cricoid cartilage that's why it is called as a posterior cricoarytenoid oh god now what is that volume that low that you can't hear it or you're not using the headphone because you sh one should be using the headphone this telegram is such a distraction also posterior cricoarytenoid muscle guys when this muscle contracts as you can see these vocal processes they will move away from each other and because vocal process will move away from each other so they are they are pulling the vocal cords also away from each other here and that causes the abduction in the vocal cord here this causes the abduction in the vocal cord so this muscle is the only muscle for the abduction that's the only abductor of the vocal cord that's the only abductor of vocal cord there's no other muscle which causes the abduction so this is the only muscle for the abduction and for this reason the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle is also called as the safety muscle it is also called as a safety muscle of larynx here because that's the only muscle which keeps the airway patent so we also call it a safety muscle of the larynx <clears throat> the next muscle that we see here is the muscle which is attached to the arytenoid cartilage and then to the lateral surface of the cricoid it is to the lateral side of the cricoid cartilage here this muscle here because it is attached to the lateral side that's why the muscle is called as a lateral lateral cricoarytenoid this muscle is lateral cricoarytenoid <clears throat> and this lateral cricoarytenoid muscle when this muscle contracts you can see both the vocal process are moving towards each other once the vocal process moves towards each other obviously the vocal cord will also close so this muscle is causing the adduction in the vocal cord so this is causing the adduction in the vocal cord and again I, the reason is, is lateral it is attached to the lateral side of cricoid cartilage that's why it is called as a lateral cricoarytenoid so causing the adduction the only muscle for abduction is the posterior cricoarytenoid and lateral cricoarytenoid is adducting the vocal cord but see one important thing to note here <clears throat> that when the lateral cricoarytenoid is working when these two vocal cords are coming close to each other still there is a space between the two arytenoid cartilage left vocal cords are closed but you can see this portion of the rima glottidis the space which is present between the two cartilage two cricoid cartilage is still open can you see that you can see the space between the two cricoid cartilage it is still open here this space is still open here that means the air can come out from this part here and when the air comes out only between the two cartilages and not between the two vocal cord this is used in whispering during whispering so in the whispering if the question is asked that which muscle is responsible for whispering so lateral cricoarytenoid is the one which is responsible for the whispering here 
because this muscle will close the vocal cord but the space between the two arytenoid cartilage will still be there and that space will allow the air to come out between the two arytenoid cartilage and that causes whispering here. So, the two ways of asking the same question adduction of vocal cord or you can say the muscle responsible for whispering that is the, the lateral cricoarytenoid. Let us move further here. Now, if you go to this part here guys, if you look at this muscle here, now there is a, another muscle that you see here. Now, this time the muscle is between the two arytenoid only. It is stretching between the two arytenoid and that is why we call it the inter arytenoid muscle. Inter arytenoid. Now, what will be the function of the inter arytenoid? Inter arytenoid muscle is basically pulling the two arytenoid close to each other. When the arytenoid is horizontally pulled close to each other, then it is not only vocal cord, vocal cord will come close to each other, even arytenoid cartilage will also come close to each other. That means it is not only the adduction of vocal cord, it is also the adduction of the two cartilages. So, the rima glottidis will completely close. So, inter arytenoid main function is the complete closure of rima glottidis. This muscle is responsible for the complete closure of rima glottidis, complete closure of rima glottidis. Interarytenoid is for the complete closure of rima glottidis. And then finally, if you look at the another muscle here, now first of all guys, look at the muscle which I am highlighting for you. This muscle is originating from the inner surface of thyroid cartilage. You can see it is coming from thyroid and then going to the lateral surface of arytenoid. Inner surface of thyroid to the lateral surface of arytenoid. And that is why the muscle is called as a thyroarytenoid. This muscle is thyroarytenoid muscle, thyroarytenoid muscle and thyroarytenoid muscle is responsible. Well, when these muscle will contract, obviously the two cartilage will come close to each other, isn't it? When this muscle will contract, obviously arytenoid cartilage and thyroid cartilage will come a little close to each other. When this cartilage comes little close to each other, so the vocal cord will get little relaxed here. Obviously, when the cartilage come close to each other, so vocal cord will be little relaxed here. So, this muscle is responsible for the relaxation of vocal cord. This muscle is re responsible for the relaxation of the vocal cord here. The lateral cricoarytenoid, uh, this thyroarytenoid muscle is for the relaxation of the vocal cord. But if you look carefully, medial to this thyroarytenoid muscle, there is a modification of the same muscle only. It is a modification of thyroarytenoid only and this muscle present medially, let me just highlight it with a different color or just no need to do that. This muscle guys here is called as vocalis. The muscle here is vocalis, vocalis muscle is responsible for what? Now, the speciality of the vocalis muscle is it is running with the vocal cord, but in the anterior one third, it is attached to the vocal cord also. It is not only running with the vocal cord, it is in the anterior one third, it is attached to the vocal cord here. And that is why this muscle is having a dual function. In the anterior one third, where it is attached to the vocal cord, in the anterior one third, this muscle causes the tension in vocal cord. It causes tension in vocal cord, but in posterior two third, where it is just running parallel to the vocal cord, not attached here, it is causing relaxation. So first of all, guys, vocalis muscle, it is nothing by itself. It's just a modification of what? It is a modification of thyroarytenoid muscle. It's a modification of thyroarytenoid, and this muscle is doing both the function. In the anterior one third of vocal cord, it is causing the tension because it is attached to the vocal cord there. And in the posterior two third, the major part, it is causing the relaxation of vocal cord, just like thyroarytenoid. And for that reason, for that reason, this muscle is called as the modulator of the larynx. This muscle is called as a modulator of the larynx. It can it can do both tension and relaxation. So this muscle is called as a modulator of the larynx. There is one more muscle which is appreciated in this picture, although we are habitual of seeing this muscle from the outside. The only muscle, the only intrinsic muscle of larynx present outside and that is cricothyroid. But you can see the cricothyroid in this image also here, look at this one here guys. This muscle here is cricothyroid here. It is a cricothyroid muscle and cricothyroid muscle though it is present outside, it is out muscle present outside here, but every time the cricothyroid muscle will contract it will bend the thyroid cartilage forwards. 
Now, when you bend the thyroid cartilage forward, the distance between the thyroid and arytenoid will increase. And because this distance between the thyroid and arytenoid is increasing, your vocal cord is getting stretched. So, cricothyroid, the only muscle of larynx, the only muscle of larynx supplied by the only muscle of larynx supplied by the external laryngeal nerve. We know rest all the muscles of larynx are supplied by what now? They are all supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve. So that's the only muscle of larynx which is supplied by the external laryngeal nerve. External laryngeal nerve. And the function is, the function of this muscle is to produce the tension in vocal cord. That's the main muscle causing the tension in vocal cord. This muscle sometimes is also called as a tuning fork of larynx. We also can call it the tuning fork of larynx. So this muscle causes the tension in vocal cord, the cricothyroid. In other words, I can say that external laryngeal nerve is responsible for causing the tension in vocal cord because that supplies only one muscle of larynx and that is cricothyroid. So this is something about the laryngeal muscles guys in the, when, when we see it in the transverse view that what muscle is for the abduction, what muscle is for the adduction, what muscle completely close the rima glottidis and what muscle can cause the relaxation and the tension in the vocal cordium. Now the point is if you get the same, uh, the same muscles only again will be, can be asked in the exam but in a different view. If you get a posterior view of something, like what I remember from the previous year exam, there was a view something like this was given and then you have to identify the muscle here. So it's the same muscle only but this time we have to have a different uh, approach to it. See, in this picture guys, that's a view from the posterior side, like that's a posterior view here. I'm sure you can all appreciate that's a hyoid bone, that's a thyroid cartilage, right? That's an that's, that's inlet of the larynx here. If this is an inlet of the larynx, the epiglottis is supposed to be somewhere here. It is covered with a mucous membrane, so we can't see it, but this, that's a site of the epiglottis. That is a site of the epiglottis. This is where the arytenoid cartilage are present, guys, on the cricoid cartilage. This, this whole thing is a cricoid cartilage, no harm in labeling it. This is the cricoid cartilage. It's a cricoid cartilage. And arytenoid is inside. If I just put a dotted line around it like that, this is where this is where the arytenoid will be present. That's how the arytenoid will be present here. Just because they're covered with the muscles and mucous membrane, so you can't see them all. So epiglottis is there, one arytenoid here, one arytenoid here, and that's a cricoid cartilage. Now let's let's try to identify the muscle on, on this here. Now you can see this muscle is present on the posterior surface of cricoid and we just discussed guys the muscle present on the posterior surface of cricoid is posterior cricoarytenoid here. So that muscle, that's another view of what muscle, that's a posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. That's a posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. Then the muscle which is going toward the lateral side, can you see muscle fiber which are going toward the lateral side over there? That muscle which is going toward the lateral side is lateral cricoarytenoid. You already know their function, posterior cricoarytenoid for the abduction, lateral cricoarytenoid for adduction here. Now, if this another arytenoid present here, obviously these muscles stretching between them are interarytenoids. Now, there are two types of interarytenoid we have. You can see some fibers are running transversely and some are running obliquely here. <coughs> this one here. The one which is running transversely, this is called as simply transverse arytenoid here. It is a part of interarytenoid only, but it is running transversely, so we call it transverse arytenoid, guys. This muscle is transverse arytenoid. The muscle which is running a little obliquely here, in an oblique fashion here, this is called as oblique arytenoid. That muscle is oblique arytenoid. So both transverse arytenoid and oblique arytenoid, don't forget, both are the parts of what? They are the part of interarytenoid only, both are part of interarytenoid. But what is to be seen in this image, that oblique arytenoid is stretching not only between the two arytenoid, is in fact going beyond also. You can see this oblique arytenoid is extending further and it is basically going to the lateral border of epiglottis also. You can see it is going toward the lateral border of epiglottis and that's why this extension, this extension of the oblique arytenoid further is called as airy epiglotticus. It is going from arytenoid to epiglottis, so we call it airy epiglotticus. This is airy epiglotticus. 
so that again could be a question here that what is airy epiglotticus airy epiglotticus muscle is an extension of oblique arytenoid here it's an extension of oblique arytenoid as you can see in the image and what could what could be the action guys the action of airy epiglotticus muscle will be every time this muscle will contract this muscle will pull the epiglottis backwards this muscle will pull the epiglottis backward isn't it this muscle is going to pull like this so this is going to pull the epiglottis backward and pulling the epiglottis backward means you're reducing this reducing what reducing the inlet of the larynx that's why i can say that airy epiglotticus is responsible for the for the closing of inlet of larynx closing of inlet guys just remember the word inlet i'm not saying closing the rima glottidis or anything closing the inlet of larynx this inlet of larynx is closed by this muscle and that is the airy epiglotticus there is a airy epiglotticus so this is a little bit about the the laryngeal muscles how to identify them in the transverse section and then the posterior view that's a two view which are asked in the in the previous year exams also and you should know about the actions of all these muscles innervation is not a problem because except for cricothyroid which is supplied by external laryngeal nerve every other muscle of larynx is supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. all these muscles here all these muscles that we discussed here every one of them is supplied by recurrent laryngeal nerve except crico 